Greetings again everyone, and let's get right into checking out a new lens from China, the Pergia 35mm f1.6. At only $70 or £65 in the UK, it's one of the lowest priced camera lenses I've ever tested, especially considering its very bright maximum aperture of f1.6, which lets in lots of light and can help you to get nicely out of focus backgrounds in your images. The downsides are that it's a fully manual lens, manual focus and manual aperture, and its image circle only covers an APS-C sensor, so here's what you'll see if you shoot on full frame. When you're shooting on APS-C, its focal length is the full frame equivalent of 52.5mm, so it's a nice useful field of view, giving you just a little emphasis on your subject. The lens comes in Fuji X mount, Sony E mount, and Micro Four Thirds flavours. I don't think it's available for Canon EOS M cameras, I'm afraid. I'd like to thank Pergia for sending one over to my test lab for today's video, but as usual, this is a totally independent review, its strengths will not be overemphasized, nor its weaknesses ignored. Let's look at build quality first. Considering the lens's bright aperture, it's actually very small, and only weighs 200 grams, but it's made of metal, so it feels really solid. At the rear is the aperture control ring, it turns very smoothly, feeling nicely damped, although it would be better if it had clicks on it. I found the aperture often slipping a little darker than f1.6 without my noticing if my hands accidentally bumped against it while handling the lens. And just above that, leaving barely any space at all, lies the manual focus ring. It turns nice and smoothly, actually, with just enough precision to make manual focusing achievable enough. The lens extends as you change focus, revealing an unpainted silver inner lens barrel. I'm not sure what I think of that aesthetic design, it lies halfway between looking unfinished, yet also looking kind of cool. As you can see here, the lens exhibits some focus breathing, zooming in as you focus more closely to your subject. The lens comes with lens caps and a fairly shallow hood, and an impressively well padded lens pouch with a very funky purple inner lining that smells strongly of polyester. Its filter thread size is a very small 43mm. Overall, for a very low budget manual focus optic, this is perhaps a tiny bit nicer than you'd expect for build quality, the lens feels pretty solid. But with the aperture ring turning so smoothly, and the focus ring so close to it, it can be a little tricky to handle when holding the camera to your eye. Well, let's take a look at image quality then. I'm testing it on a Sony A5100 with its 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. Straight from f1.6, picture quality in the middle of the image is absolutely brilliant. We see excellent sharpness and contrast without even any purple fringing here, which is a highly impressive start. As we begin to look over into the corners though, unfortunately image quality suddenly becomes as hazy as Emperor Caligula's grip on reality. Or is it? Let's do an experiment and refocus the lens. Wow, what a difference! Now they look as razor sharp as the middle was. This is one of the strongest cases of field curvature in a camera lens I've yet seen. The corners of the image are in focus far closer to your camera's sensor than the middle is, and that's really bad news for landscape photographers, or anyone seeking to take a picture of something that's relatively flat. But if you're just doing subject photography, carefully focusing on one subject wherever it is in the picture frame, then this lens's sharpness will actually blow you away. For a lens like this at f1.6, that corner image quality, when focused there, is pretty awesome. By the way, in case you're wondering what the middle of the image looks like now, here you go. Like I said, a huge difference. Anyway, let's refocus the lens back to the middle of the image frame, and now stop down to f2. The picture quality there is even just a tiny bit better than before. If we look over into the corners, that field curvature remains a serious problem though. In fact, those corners remain terribly soft until you stop all the way down to f8, and f11 finally sees uniform sharpness across the image frame. So, we can conclude that, with this lens, if you're shooting a wide scene across even just a fairly flat plane of focus, 
then you will have to stop down the aperture to f11 for really good results, otherwise your corners will look disastrous. However, if you're focusing on one subject in one place of the image frame, and you focus it correctly, then the lens's sharpness will be brilliant for you, even shooting wide open at f1.6, a very interesting characteristic to work with there, or rather work against. Well, let's move on and look at distortion and vignetting. The lens projects a negligible level of barrel distortion, which no one will notice in real life. The corners are quite dark at f1.6 though. At f2, they are just as bad, but at f2.8 and f4, they begin to brighten up quite well. Now let's see about close-up image quality. The lens can focus down to 28 centimeters, close enough for pictures of smaller subjects. Close-up image quality is still reasonably sharp at f1.6, but stop down just to f2 to see a big improvement in sharpness and contrast there. Now let's see how well the lens works against bright light. Get ready for more flaring than a J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie here. You will want to keep bright lights well away from this lens. As I mentioned before, this lens can obviously get you some nicely out of focus backgrounds, so let's take a look at the quality of its bokeh. It's not the smoothest I've ever seen, but it's actually reasonably nice. I quite like it. Those out of focus backgrounds have just a little bite to them to make them interesting, but there's nothing especially distracting going on either. Well, those were some interesting results, weren't they? Taking into consideration the lens's price, there are a lot of aspects to its image quality that are actually fairly pleasing. By far and away its biggest issue is that crazy field curvature. If you are shooting anything on even just a somewhat flat plane, then you will get terribly soft corners unless you stop the lens down to f11 or so, a pretty dark aperture. But if you are shooting just one subject in one part of the image frame, as I said, then even at f1.6, the lens is more than capable of brilliant sharpness. Because of its unusual limitations relating to field curvature and its manual focus design, this would not be a good lens for a beginner, unless they wanted a bit of a challenge. But for those feeling a bit more bold, and who are wily enough to get around its limitations, the Pergear 35mm f1.6 could actually be a really excellent performer, especially considering its low price. So this is one for the seasoned photographer, I think, but the reward for them is that they could potentially get a lot out of it for the money they're paying.